Kentucky's rural communities have been there for over 100 years, many of them. They often had very thriving economies and significant numbers of people living there. They were retail and workplaces. On Saturday night, people would come to town and the streets would just be lined with people just walking and visiting. We had the world's largest brick plant in, in Olive Hill, actually two of them. The economy was so good for them. There was a lot of employment here at that time. When that brick factory closed, that was a major source of employment and nothing moved back in and so they found themselves in a situation where they didn't have a major employer in the community. Retail stayed around for a while, but I'd say within about another 20 years you saw less and less of it. It seems that people tend to shop where they work, so if everybody's working out of town, you know, there's, there's nothing to draw them together as a community. So. If you study the history of Olive Hill, flooding was always there. You're always going to have that fear. So in 210, we had two major floods in Olive Hill, so it's really been hard to come back after that. It, it pretty much ruined everything we had down here. After the two floods hit, people were really kind of depressed because, you know, you're just starting to rebuild after the first flood, and then you're the place where a microburst occurs and, and the waters come rushing off the mountains and completely reflood the downtown. I came up to try to take care of things, clean up, sell out maybe, and I sort of got snagged by being here. Customer after customer would come in and say, oh, please don't close, please don't close. We don't want to see another, another business in Olive Hill go down. And so they were looking for some help to think about how they could recover from that, but also begin to create a sense of optimism in the community that, that things could change, that they could choose to make their place, um, their community a better place. Okay, let's be proactive. And so um, I began working with the women um, um, and the Historic Society, and that was who was organizing this, to um, develop a community strategic plan. At the same time, FEMA arrived um, to assist the community after the two floods. And so um, I began collaborating with FEMA and helping them with their efforts. And we kind of combined the two in order to bring people in to begin imagining what the town could be like and how it could be restored to its former vitality. As a business owner, it's economics. More stability. I would like to see my children be able to come back and live here. Oh, I'd like to see us become a quaint town that uh, would be a destination place. Have some jobs and opportunities to keep some of our advantageous young people in our community. We need to bring in businesses that have jobs. And recreation and fun things to do, places to go, things to see, and I think that's what all this is working toward. Thinking about what things can be like as opposed to uh, griping about the way things uh, are. If you're going to complain about something, you better be ready to do something about it. Let's start meeting and uh, coming up with some plans. And Lori helped to facilitate that in a lot of ways. And so we have a, a plan in place. The strategic plan clearly identifies, has a column in it that says who's, who initiates. And that is identifying an individual who's passionate about that topic or a community organization that says, look at, we'll lead this part. Of the, of the plan and the implementation of it. And that is how they began bringing in new people, not just from Olive Hill, but from Grayson and the county as a whole, to participate in thinking about, we're gonna lift all of Carter County to a better place, to a better tomorrow, by working together. We needed a lot of community input. And we did quite a few surveys. To express their thoughts and beliefs for positive and 
and negative uh, conditions in the community and what they felt would be beneficial. So we're not just one small group of a few people making a decision. We're actually broad um, spectrum of people within our community from all walks, all you know, socioeconomic backgrounds, and they're saying these are the things that we feel are the most important. So we know what's important to the community. If the community is backing it, they're going to help us with the project along a little bit more. So that survey has really helped shape our ideas about some of the things that our community wants and needs. A strategic plan is something that will have to be revisited throughout the years, but at least we have a starting place, we have some goals that will be set up between now and then, and then we have a long-term goal 20 years from now to make certain that we get where we want to be, that we uh, take care of the needs in our community, and we're working towards something. The, the key for this whole process is for local folks to get used to trying to solve our own problems instead of waiting for um, someone from Frankfurt or someone from DC to throw a pile of money. Um, you know, it'd be great if that happened in certain cases, but you know, we can't wait for that. We've got to try to solve some of our solutions um, ourselves. They've established a community fund, a foundation, um, in, um, that allows them to begin soliciting donations where people can leave a legacy to, of investment in the future of the community that can be used to fund small projects to improve and enhance quality of life. It's a pretty daunting um, idea to think that you could start a community foundation that could be worth a whole lot of money one day. Because what they wanted to do ultimately was to not have to rely on outsiders to provide them with the uh, economic resources that they needed to rebuild, but perhaps to create and, and discover a pool within themselves and how to bring people together and get them to invest in making the community a better place. We've got to look for the, for the future because, you know, a community can decide to just maintain the status quo or you can look towards making your community a better place to live and to raise your families. When you talk to these young people, uh, juniors in high school, and when they see how they could be part of that, the growth of the community, or they could help someone in it, uh, then it, may, it seems more real to them. And they say, well, maybe I can stay here. Maybe I don't have to move away and get a job. Maybe this is where I want to be. And I think that you're going to see Carter County come together and make good things happen. Carter County is just an amazing place. And it was a community where there was not a lot of work being done between Olive Hill and Grayson, but now that's not true anymore. They work together very closely, as well as with the, the county government to think about the county as a whole and what can we do to move it forward. I do not think that we would have gotten nearly as far or even at all maybe with some of these projects, some of these development projects, had it not been for um, the Office of Community Development at, at UK and the FEMA team. Making sure we were asking the right questions and documenting what we were what we were learning. Because they bring a fresh perspective. They bring broad experience. They have expertise. They've seen this done in other communities. They know how to help you get beyond the naysayers, you know, and they help you maintain your vision and your passion for getting to where you need to go. It's a shot in the arm because she's such a great cheerleader. And you really need that because it takes a lot of time. If when you set your mind to it, a community, regardless of its current position in terms of economics or poverty or other kinds of challenges, they can choose to make a difference. All they need is a little bit of help in figuring out how to marshal the resources and the knowledge and the talents they already have to figure out the best path for improvement. You know, we have to be the vehicle for change. We need everybody to get on board to make that happen. I feel like I live here 
it's up to me to make a difference. I want to see people being able to work and live and enjoy themselves here, to not have to drive to Ashland or Moorhead. I want to see our downtown thriving and I want to see people feeling um, invited to be down there because it's attractive and it's safe and there are things to do and so people are greeting each other on the street again. That's the way it used to be here.